Hello and welcome to some extra material that goes with part 3 of my 2015 guide to how to perform chip seek analysis using Galaxy. Uh, what I neglected to do in part 3 which described how to perform mapping of reads ready for the chip seek analysis was to actually show you how to run a bow tie in Galaxy itself. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to do this. So to find Galaxy, um, we can uh, go to the toolbar on the left hand side of Galaxy and type Bowtie. And this shows us the different options we have for running Bowtie. And for the reads in my example, which are single-ended reads, I'm going to run Bowtie, the first version. Um, as I said in part 3, uh, Bowtie 2 is good for if you have long paired-end reads. So to run Bowtie, we just click on this one here. Uh, map with bow tie for Illumina. This may say something different depending on whether you're using your own instance or the Galaxy main. So in the middle of the screen we have uh, all the different entries for um, adding different parameters and telling the program uh, what data sets to use. Now um, so the reads that we're going to be using are the reads that have been trimmed using Trimomatic and based on those settings we're going to be having a set of reads that um, vary in length between 36 to 68 base pairs which was the maximum length. So the input for the bow tie analysis is the output of Trimomatic, which in this case uh, is the uh, trimmed reads here in number 7 and 8 of the Galaxy history. Now in the bow tie options we can set different things like what genome reference to map against and um, basically many other different um, parameters. But I'm just going to show you uh, well, what I did and what essential parameters need to be changed for this to work properly. So the reference in this case is not goat but is mouse and as before if we see it on this drop down bar we can select it directly or start typing the one we know we need which in this case is mouse mm9 from UCSC so we can select that um, for these samples as I said we have a single ended library but you can change that from single end to paired end as fits your data it's already selected the input but to keep things uh, in order we can start off with the uh, chip reads uh, the chromatin immunoprecipitation reads and you can see on the drop down menu that all the available FASTQ files are available to select but we want to use the trimmed ones so we click on chip now um, there are many many settings in Bowtie uh, some which I've never even touched but there is one we're going to change which is fairly important for outputting reads that only map to one location in the genome the so-called uniquely mapped reads now what we can do is instead of using the commonly used settings we go to a full parameter list and as you can see there are lots and lots of settings um, some 
of interest, which are good to know, is that um, whether I read maps or not depends primarily on the seed length, and this is the first 28 uh, bases of the read, and the number of mismatches that are present in that seed region. So in this case there can be a maximum of two mismatches in the first 28 bases. And if that's OK, it will carry on and read, uh, map the rest of the read. Now what I'm looking for now is the um, setting that sets uniquely mapped reads and that is the minus M flag. Uh, it's here. Suppress all alignments for a read if more than n reportable alignments exist. So instead of it being minus 1, which is basically no limit, we could just set that to 1. And that's what we want for this particular mapping. Uh, all the other ones can pretty much be left alone unless you really know what you're doing. And then you'd basically just click execute and let Galaxy run the mapping for you. So while that's running for the, uh, the Chromatin IP reads you could then go on and just immediately set up the mapping of the uh, input reads and they'll either run concurrently or the input reads will start mapping when the chip reads are finished mapping. So what will happen is the output of Bowtie, which is the SAM file of each, will appear in the history. And uh, the, the SAM file is the human readable um, reads. So at the top we have the header, which basically gives you information about uh, the different chromosomes that were mapped to and their length and the command line used to run bow tie and then you have all the lines that show you the mapped and unmapped reads so we'll have one for the chip reads and one for the input reads now that's fine but we can't do anything with the SAM file as it is or at least we could but we don't want to because there's a, a certain amount of filtering we want to do to the reads before we put them into the peak calling step. Now the first thing we need to do is convert them to the binary version of the map reads called a BAM file and there are a set of tools called SAM tools which can do this sort of job. So if we type SAM tools in the search bar, here we can see NGS SAM tools. And one of the one one of the tools that we need is SAM to BAM. Convert SAM format to BAM format. This is very simple. You just give it the name of the file you want to convert. In this case it would be the uh, chip and input SAM files and the correct um, genome reference, in this case MM9. So we do that for both the files and we end up with BAM files. These are binary and therefore you cannot see the contents. Now the next thing we can do is something called flag, flag stat and this basically gives us some simple statistics telling us how well the, the mapping went. And this tool can also be found in some tools in Galaxy. Here we are, Flagstat. You could also search for Flagstat directly in the toolbar. Uh, let's just have a look at the contents of a Flagstat. Basically what this tells you is the number of reads that went into the, the mapping software and the percent that was mapped. And this is just useful to give you a, an overall impression of um, 
how well the mapping went and in this case this is a reasonable percentage mapped reads um, now something that's not currently available in, in this version of Bowtie is the file that gives you more in-depth um, um, in-depth statistics on the number of reads that were mapped um, in total and the number of reads that were uniquely mapping. Now this is kind of an endpoint. This is telling you the, the total number that went into Bowtie and the uniquely mapped reads that have come out. If you want to um, find the total number that were mapped, you will either have to wait for a new version of Bowtie to come out uh, in Galaxy or run it uh, yourself on whatever workstation you might have. But for the for this particular analysis, um, basically any analysis you did, uh, just knowing the uniquely mapped read number is fine. Now, um, what we want to do next is to convert the reads in the BAM file um, into a format called BED format. And we'll just have a quick look at that. This is basically um, a format that contains the chromosome start and end of the uh, of a read, the name of that read, its mapping quality, which uh, in this case is 255, which indicates that it was uniquely mapping, and what strand it's on. Now. Uh, Max2 uh, can actually input a SAM file, uh, so we could have uh, used the files in 13 and 14. However, what I want to do with the bed file that we're going to generate next is to filter it, but I'll come to that in a minute. Now to get the reads from BAM format into BED format we need to use uh, another suite of tools called um, BED tools. So I'm just going to type that in here and we can see here we've got BED tools and the one we want is convert from BAM to BED. So we can click on that Again, this is very simple. We just put in the name of the BAM file. We want to create a six column bed file, which is the one I showed you before. And the rest of these are fine for our purposes. Press execute for both, and you'll end up with uh, a bed file. Okay, so I was saying that the bed files need a certain amount of filtering and you'll see that the files in 21 and 22 have the word base in them and this is just a little marker that tells me that only reads relating to the, the basic chromosomes are present in these files and by this I mean at least for mouse is that there are only reads that map to chromosome 1 to 19, X and Y. Now, the reference genome also contains some other contigs which um, are contigs that have been sequenced but are not part of the main assembly, the main chromosomes and although it's important that these are present in the mapping if they're present in the uh, peak calling step they can cause problems and actually one that I've neglected to mention the most important one that we don't want reads for is 
the mitochondrial uh, genome. Uh, this is because the mitochondrial contamination can be present uh, many times greater than the actual nuclear genome. So if there are reads present then they can uh, how shall I put it, mess up the statistics in uh, MAX2. So this filtering step is a simple but effective way of making sure that the summary statistics in MAX are as correct as possible. So to uh, do this filtering step we need to do the following. To filter the, the reads uh, we can use one of the uh, main Galaxy tools called Select. Now the easiest way to find it is to just type Select Uh, I always forget where it is myself even and it is in the filter and sort uh, part of the toolbar so we can click on select we want to select the uh, file we want to filter which in this case is the trimmed base bed file now at the moment it's going to select things that match however we want to keep everything that does not match a particular pattern now that pattern is to remove anything in the bed file or at least do not include any lines in the bed file that either contain the word random or now this symbol I've just typed is a pipe symbol and can be found on the uh, lower left hand signed lower left hand side of the keyboard near Z and A. It's uh, an upright bar which you access by pressing shift um, it also has uh, backslash under it as well. So pipe, so pipe means or. And the other thing we want to exclude is anything that contains chromosome M. So this is saying uh, f select lines from this file not matching random or chromosome M in the lines press execute and then we end up with a bed file only containing reads mapping to the main chromosomes in the mouse genome. So that concludes this extra piece of information for part three. Um, yeah so what we have now are two bed files that can be used in the peak calling process using MAX2 and I'll join you again in part 4 where I'll discuss how to run the peak calling software and some important concepts that is helpful to understand in the peak calling process. Thanks, bye.